This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Without a healthy mind, being happy is hard. Visit betterhelp.com super and see if online therapy is for you. Hey, brother. Okay, guys, today we are going to tackle one of the more commonly asked questions in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, which is why didn't Harry die or how did Harry Potter survive? It's a very simple question, but with a kind of complicated answer. Because by the time Harry gets into the woods, it feels like any number of things might have been the reason he survived and is allowed to come back to life. And I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes in. Like, which thing that was preventing Harry from dying was actually in play when it actually came down to it? Like, Harry walks into the woods. He is prepared to die. He tells the snitch that, and it reveals the resurrection stone. And I can see a lot of people reading the book being like, wow, 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 wow. Dumb Dumbledore, you genius. You gave Harry the way back, and it practically mirrors how he defeated Quirrell back in Philosopher's Stone. And yes, I do mean mirror in more than one clever way. But in Philosopher's Stone, he can only get the stone because he wanted to find it, but not use it. And now he can only open the snitch, which will protect him from death when he's ready to die. But he is prepared to die, so boom, Resurrection Stone, we're saved! Except no, because he drops it, and then also that's not at all how it works anyway. But. But but he, he did just have it, right? And it is the re- resurrection stone and he, he does get re- resurrected. That's not, that doesn't have anything to do with it? Correct, it had nothing to do with it. Well, maybe, kind of, just not, not in the way you're thinking though. I mean, it's confusing, but don't worry, today we're gonna get to the bottom of all of it. <laughs> Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, MeUndies. You know how when you're speaking to a big crowd, the advice is always, imagine everyone in their underwear. Well, I've personally always found this to be less than useful. I mean, a whole crowd of underclad folk don't exactly bring me calm. But what does bring me calm is imagining myself in cloud comfort level underbridges. Or better yet, just actually wearing said cloud comfort level underbridges. Better better yet, cloud comfort level underbridges that come with fun designs and crazy colors and are a constant secret reminder of my own magical whimsy. Game changer. And I have to tell you, MeUndies are these. They are my top drawer drawers. Probably because MeUndies are designed to be the softest things on, dare we say it, this planet. Baby bottoms, <laughs> yeah, old news. MeUndies signature micro model fabric literally grows from trees, making their undies not only super soft, but also sustainable. They offer different cuts because they just get it. We've got different butts. Check out their undies, socks, bralettes, loungewear, and more, ranging from size is XS to 4XL. And MeUndies has a great offer for all of our viewers. Any first time purchasers get 15% off their order plus free shipping. So if you want 15% off your first order plus free shipping plus a 100% guarantee, head over to MeUndies.com slash theories. Again, that is MeUndies.com slash theories. Link is in the description down below. Okay, so to kick off, we're actually gonna go backwards and review the life-saving protections Harry had on his side that were actually not the life-saving protections that saved his life. Because yes, there are many, and when it comes down to it, Voldemort had just like absolutely no chance against Harry. Which even that I find pretty interesting because like there's always that joke that like, oh wow, Voldemort couldn't even take over a high school. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> but then on the other hand, Harry is literally a Voldemort's kryptonite. Like I think it's so much more a case, not that Harry Harry is more powerful than Voldemort. It's just that Voldemort is like super weak to Harry. So first let's pick up where we left off before the intro, the resurrection stone and how it is not responsible for saving Harry. Which on your first pass of the book, I think is confusing for everyone. I mean, he gets it from the snitch, which has been this riddle he's been carrying around with him for literally the entire book. Then he finally cracks it as he's heading into the forest to die, promptly uses it, and then is shortly after resurrected. Like (laughs) coincidence? It is? Well, yes, sort of. See, whether or not Harry used the Resurrection Stone, he would have been resurrected. But it is for the same reason that he is able to be resurrected, that he is able to open the Snitch and access the Resurrection Stone. But more on that in a minute. So the question we keep coming back to though, does that mean the Resurrection Stone played absolutely no role in him coming back? Well, another theory would suggest that the stone isn't the whole reason, but it's a very notable one third of the reason. And that the real reason Harry is able to come back is because he is the true master of death. I mean, after all, Harry does leave the castle under the protection of the invisibility cloak, which I would argue he's been master of since Philosopher's Stone. He's also about to face down the Elder Wand, a wand he is actually already the master of 
in that moment. And lastly, he's finally able to open the golden snitch and gain access to the resurrection stone, which he then promptly uses, thus mastering the third hallow and becoming master of death. And then as master of death, he cannot be killed or at least has the option to come back if he's killed, which is really what we see happen in the sequence at King's Cross when he's talking to Dumbledore. Harry at this moment is basically in limbo. Like he hasn't quite passed through the veil yet, but he's definitely very clearly somewhere that isn't the forest. Dumbledore makes this pretty clear. I've got to go back, haven't I? That is up to you. I've got a choice. Oh yes, we are in King's Cross, you say? I think that if you decided not to go back, you would be able to, let's say, board a train? And where would it take me? on. And when contrasted with how ghosts work in the wizarding world, Harry's choice in this matter is pretty unique. Ghosts are especially disappointing on the one subject that fascinates most people. Ghosts cannot return a very sensible answer on what it is like to die because they have chosen an impoverished version of life instead. But alas, Harry's mastery over the three Deathly Hallows and his title of Master of Death is not what offers him the choice to come back in this situation. In fact, I dare say it's the exact opposite. The reason Harry is able to come back is actually the same reason he's able to even be Master of the Hallows. And that reason is because Harry meant to die and actively doesn't defend himself. <laughs> But I should have died. I didn't defend myself. I meant to let him kill me. And that will, I think, have made all the difference. Harry's determination to sacrifice himself allows his own soul to be spared and for only the bit of Voldemort's soul to be destroyed. But alas, it gets deeper because even Harry's determination to die is not actually what's tethering him to life. Oddly, what is actually tethering Harry is Voldemort himself. <laughs> because Voldemort took some of Harry's own blood into himself when he was reborn way back in Goblet of Fire. And inside Harry's blood lives the protection from his mother's original sacrifice. Voldemort took that protection into himself, which means he is essentially acting as the Horcrux for Harry, just sort of like in reverse. Like really it's more of a love crux. Love hurts. But so really, as of this moment, right here, Harry actually sort of became invincible to Voldemort. In fact, if they had dueled using wands that did not have twin cores in the graveyard and Voldemort had managed to hit Harry with a body cadavera, the result would have been the same. Harry would have been able to come back. But that moment doesn't actually arrive for another three years until this moment in the forest where in the end, Voldemort only ends up destroying a piece of himself instead of Harry. <laughs> Not the last piece of himself, however. At that moment, there is still, of course, Nagini and the bit of soul in Voldemort Prime still tethering Voldemort to life. Although interestingly, the bit of soul inside of Voldemort Prime would have been destroyed in that moment had Harry raised his wand. Because as we already mentioned, in that moment, Harry is actually already the master of the Elder Wand. And had he raised the wand and offered any resistance, the Elder Wand would have gone ahead and backfired. But then in that scenario, Voldemort still would have been tethered to life by Nagini and the bit of soul still inside of Harry. And I'm just guessing here, but I think he would have returned back to sort of a mist form we saw him in back in Philosopher's Stone. But that's not what happens. And the next time they face off, one chapter and one dead snack later, Harry does offer some resistance and the Elder Wand does backfire and finally kills Voldemort. Which rather importantly, saves Harry himself from becoming a murderer and leaves his soul completely intact. And that right there is really the importance of the Elder Wand in the final battle, is that it allows a way for Voldemort to die without Harry himself having to become a murderer. Because here's the thing, in that final battle in the Great Hall, regardless of Harry being the master of death, or regardless of him being the master of the Elder Wand, or not having a second soul to spare, none of that matters. Because Voldemort still has Harry's blood inside him, meaning Voldemort can personally not kill Harry. Like even if Harry just horribly missed with his spell, like Expelliarmus and Voldemort had hit him full on with the body cadavera, wouldn't matter. Harry would still just come back. Like the battle is over before it even begins. The only way Voldemort could actually kill Harry is if he let one of his Death Eaters just do it. Like that would actually work. But if Voldemort was capable of letting anyone else but himself do it, 
he wouldn't really be Voldemort at all. Actually, I would have really loved to see that play out. Like Harry walks into the Great Hall, just confident as ever, and just lets Voldemort strike him down like five times in a row, progressively just freaking Voldemort out as he rises from the dead time after time. Time after time. Well, come on, Tom. Let's finish this the way we started. Each time he just slowly explains his unbeatable advantage, finally offering Voldemort some forgiveness or a chance for remorse. And Voldemort's like, never. Harry's like, all right, fine, I offered it to you. Also, I'm the master of the Elder Wand. Expelliarmus! But there you go, guys. Hopefully that helps you understand Harry's survival of Avada Kedavra in the Deathly Hallows. It has nothing to do with the Master of the Death or the Deathly Hallows themselves and everything to do with Voldemort taking Harry's blood into himself in Goblet of Fire. But Ben, my question for you and everybody else is, what other questions about the wizarding world of Harry Potter might you have or do you feel like needs explaining? What would you like us to look into? Let us know in the towel section section down below. But guys, thanks as always for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you'd like to see why James's sacrifice didn't count and only Lily's, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, until next time, Ben, I will see you in another life.